Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. Today we're gonna to talk about the rotator cuff muscles. We're gonna talk about the anatomy and also the function of these muscles, the sits muscles. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So the rotator cuff is a group of four muscles around the glenohumeral joint. Functionally, and this is really important, they stabilize the glenohumeral joint and keep the ball and socket together. They maintain ball and socket congruency. Now each of these four muscles actually has a specific action. Let's start with subscapularis. The subscapularis is kind of the oddball because it does internal rotation of the shoulder. So if you ever see an exercise where someone's pulling a cable from the outside and pulling it in towards them, that's gonna be a subscapularis exercise. So the scapula bone sits up against the rib cage, the posterior side of the rib cage, and the subscapularis is between the scapula and the back of the rib cage. Moving on, we have the supraspinatus. This is one of the other rotator cuff muscles and its main function is shoulder abduction. From zero degrees, meaning the arm next to the side of the body, to 30 degrees, this is the primary abductor of the shoulder. So the last two rotator cuff muscles are the teres minor and the infraspinatus. These two muscles are on the back or the posterior side of the scapula and they're inferior to the spine of the scapula. The function of the teres minor and infraspinatus is shoulder external rotation. So the classic rotator cuff exercise that you see with shoulder external rotation, maybe a side-lying dumbbell external rotation or something like that, that's actually just working the teres minor and the infraspinatus of the four rotator cuff muscles. So the rotator cuff muscles play an important role in glenohumeral joint stabilization. The glenohumeral joint is a ball and socket and it does a roll and slide motion to maintain congruency between the humerus bone and the glenoid fossa. The rotator cuff muscles play an important role in maintaining that centered position throughout the range of motion of the shoulder. So you might see exercises for the rotator cuff including external rotations. We just want to make sure when we are doing these ones we're loading it in the proper plane so we actually want to make sure that that load is, is actually going against the motion of shoulder external rotation. You also might see things like rhythmic stabilizations uh, or some other type of exercise like that to train the rotator cuff for its function of glenohumeral joint stability. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you in understanding the rotator cuff. If you want to learn more about topics like this, go ahead and hit subscribe and make sure you hit the like button. Thanks. We'll see you in the next one.